All right, so the boys get here in a few days. We're obviously here for a production with the Honorable Company for the first ever AIG Women's Open at Muirfield. Uh, really so pumped to, to be putting that story together with the folks up there. Uh, the story for why I'm going say that in October is I have been chasing that experience I had back in 2013 at North Berwick uh, for almost a decade where you show up to a golf course, you know there's some hype around it, but maybe that it's still a little bit underrated um, and that you just find unique, quirky features uh, that you wouldn't necessarily find anywhere else. And we're gonna find out when we meet Scott and Simon tomorrow. So, uh, St. Anadoc, here we go. I've been acting like a wild man Sleeping like a child I used to be um, on the lifeboat down at Rock here for 17 years. Every time I got a shout, I was straight down there, I was out on the sea, like, you know, it was lovely. The, the local members are a fantastic bunch, you know, good as gold. Sturdy yard, you know, the Cornish are hard people, yeah. you know, but they are brutal. Brutal people. In what, in what sense? They're just hard. I mean, they 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 will go out in every single way. You know, if if I didn't stop them going out in in really hideous conditions, they will still go out there and hit a golf ball. You know, it's just they're just mental. We're talking eighty kilometer. Wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's just a mild breeze down here for them. <laughs> golf is war. Right? It should yeah, be a battle. Yeah, I know. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, well, 20, yeah, 28 years ago. Well, I, I was um, in a job, I worked at um, an RAF base prior to that, and it came to an end. We was building an under, um, underground communication centre, and that came to an end. So I tried everything. I even went for a job as a pasty crimper, so basically making the shapes of the... <laughs> right? Because I did not want to go and sign on with the government. So I turned up this, this bakery, and... Uh, <laughs> They said, uh, oh, so I come for the job as a passy crimper. And uh, they said, um, okay, okay, um, let's have a look at your hands. So I showed them my hands. No, no, I'm sorry that your hands are too big. So I was discriminated about the size of my hands. It was just the bizarrest thing. So I thought, oh, well, fair enough. And by some quirk of fate, there was a, a job that came up um, here. So he said, do you want to work here? So I said, well, I can't give it a go. Did you have a look at my hands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, it's a natural charm to the place. Um, so many different vistas out on the golf course. Um, and it's each hole has its own story, to be fair. Um, you play towards the sea, your first, your first golf hole, you play away from the sea on your second, and then you sort of lose yourself in the fact that, am I really on a Lynx? Because you go down to the, the, the third, the fourth, you play across to the fifth, and then, you go, then you're playing against the Himalayas, which is a massive dune structure. And I think every hole has its own quirky feel to it. What other courses do you view as sort of role models to a certain extent from the Queen's perspective? What I would like to aspire to is, uh, is Royal St George's. I went to Royal St George's and I played there in March, this sort of time. And I, the surface, I, I've never ever seen surfaces like it. That's what you want to aspire to, you know? Stradry on one is, is um, 
is to play into the um, first bowl on the first and then um, I would pitch it to the just slightly left of the guy post okay. and you, you have a good run then I mean and sort of coming into the uh, into the season where you get nice crisp bouncy fairways you can all but guarantee that you'll either be on it or near it from your second shot even from a blind shot down to local knowledge You don't know what to expect, and then you see this like moon crater on the left on one. It's like, holy crap, what is it? That's that that there used to be the 18th green. Okay. Back in back in the day, that was the 18th green, and at the top there, you see that uh, stone at the top of the. Uh, yeah. That's where the, the um, clubhouse was sited. The old wooden shack. Mm. I didn't want to chase speed when I, when I took over in 2008. My, my remit was. I don't want to chase speed because if I start chasing speed and I start losing surfaces so I want to chase consistency if you if you think you've reached the end goal then you've reached the end goal in your, in your, in your career I think those those greens out there will never be perfect they will never be perfect so um, but I think we're, we are slowly getting into uh, where we should be in the rankings What does a golfer do on the third tee? What should they be aware of? Obviously the road. If, if, you, if you have a clean drive from, that, from the third tee, you're in trouble. Um, most people tend to pitch it to the left because you've got a left to right roll um, and you've got a bigger space there. So you, you tend to choke down on a drive or even a three, I normally take a three wood from there. Choke it down. Hit it to the left, use the bank, centre of the fairway, pop it on. Pop it on. Love the fourth, love the fourth, because it's different. It's different. You've got the marsh, you've got the wetlands on the left, you know, you've got your out of bounds, the fields on the right. Um, it's quite a tight hole. Um, but in, in that respect, you can still open your shoulders on that hole, which is quite a bizarre thing to do yeah. um, if, if, you, if you're confident enough. So I like, I like the fourth. If I was to leave this place tomorrow, we've raised it up the rankings. I mean, it's not just me, you know, I'm just a, a conductor in an orchestra and, and it's a well-versed orchestra. My boys are just brilliant, like, you know. Maintenance on Himalayas is, um, we don't tend to do too much to that. Um, it's more of a, a, a cleaning process of any sort of road grasses that, that decided to sort of grow in it, which is very, very rare, really. You, the marum grass you see around tends to sprout up through, through the centre of it in bits and pieces, but it's, it's, it looks after itself, really. There is um, some scope of actually um, making it into its original stature um, back when 
it was basically wrapped itself around that dune there and, and I think that would look lovely. So that's what we're going to try and do eventually. Crazy bunkering. <laughs> Crazy bunkering. Crazy bunkering. What's the play on eight? Play on eight is you either take it on or you don't. Wind plays a massive factor there. You get a northerly come in. If, if I was playing that hole, I tend to, to squirt it out to the right because I know I've got a good, good line in from the right and keep shy of those four bunkers in the front because that's just, they're just a killer. Um, especially if you do have an northerly wind. Um, it's not a difficult hole, really. Um, you, you, can, you can, nine times out of ten, if you, if you hit a fairly clean shot, you can normally stick it. Just finished nine, two bogeys to start, seven pars in a row, which in these gusts of 50 kilometers will take it. So we're on 10 right now. He's up, up to the top of the hill there, and you can see 14 green. To start the turn, we're on the church hole now. 14 green, the early call is, it's going to be one of my favorite green sites I've ever seen. We'll see when we get there. They're, they're different microclimates throughout the golf course. Um, see. When you get down towards the 10th area, it's not typical links. The 10th actually, back in the, or, oh, you know, um, 200 years ago, was, it, was an actual canal up through there. So um, that, you have its own challenges there because of airflow. So right after the 10th, just in case you need a little bit of prayers, you walk right over to the St. Antioch Church. Pretty nice touch. The 13th is, is a quite a difficult hole, really. Um, a lot of people tend to go out to the right. And if you're out to the right, then you, you've got your bunkers and you've got that zigzag, you've got the rough to, to, um, to contend with. And you've also got the plateau green, which is at the top. If you to clear the bunkers, you got a good chance of making par. If you don't, then good luck. Good luck. It's quite a it's it's a hard uh, green to hole. Um, it's with that wind today. It's quite fiery. Yeah. Um, and depending on where the pin position is, um, I'll always play short. Fourteen, you've got to stick left. Stick left on fourteen. Everything sheds off to the from from left to right there. To the right to that green. Um, in the season, we, we cut it down to semi rough, um, and it is a lob wedge on, onto that. And you take your you know your, your life insurance ends really. <laughs> no, because uh, that's one hell of a shot to get out there. So when I say stick left, always stick left. You know, even if you get snowed up in the semi just before the green, you've got a nice little chip. This is the ten for top five favorite green of mine that I've ever seen. 
it's, it's, a, it's a green which will never ever be changed, you know, and I wouldn't want it to be changed because that, that's, that's just the, the beauty of that hole. So that's the last green that gets cut on, the, on any given day. And I can stand, as I'm coming around, driving around to the right hand side, my sight is like looking across the table. Yeah, and exactly. I, Yeah, and it's perfect because I can see every blemish that, you know, so then I know I can go back to my mechanic and say, like, I think that needs regrinding, like, you know, the cylinders need regrinding because you can just see. The 16th, it's because it runs perpendicular to the to the the, the estuary, and it's you know south to north, like you know, it's perfect, and and, it, and the views from that as well, and the fescue on that fairway. If I had that fairway on every single fairway of this golf course, I would be really happy, yeah. really happy, Cause because it's, of the mound being well, because of the mound and and the composition of the grass species in there. The, the, it's, it's pretty much predominantly fescue. That's what we want, you know. It's, that, that's a beautiful fairway, you know. My favourite place on the golf course is it, my go-to photo is on the competition box on the 18th because the vista you've got from there is you you can pretty much see the whole of the golf course from there um, and you've got obviously Padstow and you've got the bay which is you know it, it, that that is my favourite part of the golf course. A golf will either come in elated or broken, you know. <laughs> but equally, will come in and say how well they enjoyed it, uh, which is a nice thing, you know. That's all. We, that's all you ever want to do because at, at the end of the day, I don't look after the golf course for myself. It's, it's you guys that I, I do this for. You know? And, and, my, and my physique don't allow me to, to twist and, and turn like I, I used to, like, you know, so. <laughs> On camera right now, I'll get you to touch your toes. We'll see, <laughs> yeah, see how that goes. Yeah, you'll have to help me up, that's the trouble. <laughs>